We got breaking news. That's right, breaking news right now happening. Unless you already know about the news, which then makes it not breaking news. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to call it breaking news. We have Microsoft and Activision Blizzard coming together and becoming one thing entangled because Microsoft is acquiring Activision Blizzard. Hi, welcome to Zigadu Review. So the rumors are true. Microsoft slash Xbox has acquired Activision Blizzard for close to $68 billion. And that price is not as crazy as the price that they paid for Bethesda or Cinemax, whatever you want to call it. Because technically, Activision Blizzard is a bigger company of more value and the properties that they have are bigger money makers. So it makes sense that um, Xbox Microsoft is acquiring this company. Now, the fact that they're acquiring such a big company is also making changes within Microsoft. Microsoft has announced the creation of a new division called Microsoft Gaming, which is going to focus on PC gaming, console gaming, mobile gaming, and any other sort of gaming that you can think of. The head of the division is going to be none other than Phil Spencer, who used to be the Xbox boss of Xbox, Xbox boss, Xbox, I guess you can call him. So. Phil Spencer is going to be in charge of this new division. So he is going to become now a CEO for Microsoft, this time Microsoft Gaming. Now, the deal is expected to close at the end of fiscal year 2023. Fiscal year 2023 runs from July 2022, so this year, July this year, all the way till June 2023. So the deal is supposed to be close between i will say um the beginning of the summer this year towards summer next year in my opinion it isn't going to take that long it is still most likely will close within this year in the meantime if you're wondering uh activation blizzard is going to continue working as an independent company until the deal closes at that point activation blizzard and all the people who work there are going to report to phil spencer who is the ceo of microsoft gaming which is the division the activation blizzard is going to be a part of once the deal closes one of the biggest questions of course is Will Microsoft make Call of Duty an exclusive game? Because Call of Duty is one of the biggest games that Activision has. Of course, another of the biggest games that they have is uh, WoW, which is World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft, in my opinion, isn't as big as Call of Duty. The biggest property that Activision has is Call of Duty. And one of the proofs that we have for that is that pretty much every single studio that is owned by Activision is doing some sort of work for Call of Duty. So, Call of Duty is the biggest, baddest franchise for Activision. Biggest moneymaker in the whole company. And my opinion is, yes, it will become an exclusive game. And it's, it's simple math, in, if, you, if you think about it, because some of the comments that Phil Spencer has made about the acquisition of Activision Blizzard and the games that Activision Blizzard has is that they will continue putting some games out as multi-platform, especially for PlayStation owners, right? So PlayStation owners they are telling them, hey, don't worry about it. You're going to continue having some of these games available to you, which is true, which is also the same thing that they said when they uh, acquired Bethesda. And now we know that technically every single important game that's going to come out from Bethesda, it is going to be an Xbox exclusive game. And the only one you have access to that game is if you want to be an Xbox 
Xbox Game Pass member. Otherwise, you won't get to play those games. Starfield, Elder Scrolls 6, Redfall, and I'm sure there are other games that I can even think of right now that are going to be exclusive to Xbox that at some point were probably going to be multi-platform. It makes sense that Xbox will make main Call of Duty into a exclusive game for Xbox slash Game Pass. Leaving, leaving Call of Duty Warzone as a multi-platform game because and this is all just mathematical economical sense if you have warzone which is mainly a microtransaction driven game a free-to-play game you can have people play in any platform and still make billions of dollars out of the microtransactions from anybody who plays it and if you want to play call of duty the main story multiplayer portion of the Call of Duty game, then you have to become a Game Pass member in order to play this game. Whether it be on the console, whether it be on the cloud, hopefully, or on PC. Whichever way, all those three ways of playing the main Call of Duty game lead to you having to pay money to Microsoft. And that is the way I think Microsoft is going to do it. That way, in a way, they do not break their promise to PlayStation players by saying that games from Activision are going to continue to be on PlayStation, namely Call of Duty Warzone. But if you want to play the main Call of Duty game, Xbox is going to be the place to play it on. Of course, as we know right now, Activision has has a lot of issues uh, within their company. They have the uh, workers at Raven Studios who have been on strike for weeks now. And that's one of the studios that supports Call of Duty Warzone. They have multiple allegations of uh, sexual harassment and misconduct by the leadership teams, which have been pretty much taken out already. And they have a pending lawsuit in the state of California. So this is a company that is really in a lot of trouble, which I think is the reason why they agreed to be purchased by Microsoft. Because for a while, there have been rumors that Microsoft has been looking at bigger companies to acquire. A lot of people are saying maybe EA uh, could be one of the companies they could buy. Other people say maybe 2K. And every time that the conversation shifted towards Activision, the answer was like, no way, no way they're going to buy Activision, no way Activision is going to sell because they make so much money out of just Call of Duty that they don't really need to be acquired by anyone. But with all these issues that they just had legally, it kind of puts the company in a tough spot where it makes it very easy for Microsoft to come and say, Here's the money that we can give you right now before your company tanks and loses value in the market and the properties start losing value, which is already happening with Call of Duty. And I'll get back to that point in a second. We are going to give you close to 70 million, sorry, not million, billion dollars in cash for your company before it tanks. And the reason why I'm saying before it tanks is because all the internal issues that are happening right now are in the media all the time they have tarnished the value of the company in a way where call of duty this year has been the lowest call of duty game ever this game right now call of duty vanguard is selling so bad that there are rumors that activision was planning on releasing the next call of duty early in order to counter the bad sales of call of duty vanguard so Right now, all this bad publicity, all this, let's say, storm that Activision is going through has made it very easy for Microsoft to come around and say, here's the money, sell us a company, we'll take over from now on, we'll fix everything in here. And investors, you know, clearly are going to go with the sure thing. 
uh, you know, it's better to have the money in your hand and to be, hey, let's see how this plays out and what happens. No, investors are going to be like, yeah, let's take the money. And yeah, you take care of it, Microsoft. Why not? Now, what's going to happen with Bobby Kotick, who arguably uh, really doesn't do anything, in my opinion, except collect checks for having the easiest job in the world, which is let's just continue cranking out Call of Duty games and people will buy them, spend money on the microtransactions while I collect my money, while pretending that he had no clue of what was happening within the company and all the people who were sexually harassed and mistreated in the company. Because, you know, CEOs, you shouldn't have a clue of what's happening in the companies that they run, right? I feel that this way, Activision can also get rid of Bobby at the end of the fiscal year. So probably at the end of 2023 or sometime between 2022 and 2023, once that sale closes, there at that point, the board of directors can say, well, we don't really need Bobby in this place because Microsoft can stick a person from their own division to run Activision at that point and try to clean up the image of the company by saying, look, we have a new leadership in place that is going to make changes, you know, trickle down and kind of get rid of all the bad actors that might still be left around the company and kind of start over again. That is just, you know, PR 101. So it is going to happen that Bobby is going to get kicked out of that company eventually. It's not going to happen right now because technically Microsoft does not own the company yet. But once Microsoft has papers in hand, Bobby is going to get his walking papers. Now, what can we expect as players my hope my personal hope is the microsoft goes in there and hopefully makes call of duty a game that comes out every other year instead of continuing the yearly um cranking of the game because clearly it might be that at this point the franchise is going into um you know like people are getting tired of the games and there's not that much variety between game and game and clearly, Vanguard going World War II is not something that people clearly were into. So, uh, I, uh, my hopefully, fingers crossed, is that Microsoft does that goes. From now on, we're going to have a Call of Duty game every other year because we have Warzone. We can put more resources into Warzone and we can live off of Warzone in the year that there's no Call of Duty main game. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, that's that to me will be the smart move to to revive the franchise and make it something that people really are looking forward to. Right? And then we have World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is a game that also is in need of some new blood, some new you know pumping up World of Warcraft to make it back to where it used to be. Not that it's a, a gaming crisis and people are not playing it. But to make it again what it used to be and, 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 and also bring it to modern day uh, gaming where you can have a, a more of a type of transactions that you have in, in, in games today. I hate to say it, but World of Warcraft is prime for a game to have a lot of transactions in it because it's a subscription based game. And so you can give people something in exchange for their subscriptions. But also you can sell other things. Now, I'm not a World of Warcraft player, so maybe I'm talking about something that I don't really know about. Uh, and I'm talking about something that's already happening. But from what I know, you know, World of Warcraft does need some more uh, love and care in order to make it what it used to be. Diablo. Diablo also needs more attention than it has gotten. I feel that that franchise is living on past games by just cranking out the older games with a new uh, with a new paint coat uh, or coat of paint, you know, backwards speaking sometimes. And so uh, Diablo can be a franchise that can be revived again by Microsoft. We have other properties that are owned by Activision that haven't been around in a while. We have DJ Hero, which could be revived. It's been a few years, never played it, wasn't really interested in DJ Hero. 
but it's a game that hey you know there's a lot of people who are around today who were not around when that game was out and technically you could sell a new you know plastic peripheral with a new game to a new generation of players same thing with guitar hero we have guitar hero which hasn't been around in a while and it could be revived again for a new generation overwatch overwatch launched as a huge huge property and somehow they drove the property to the ground overwatch also in my opinion is in a little bit of trouble and also needs some tlc from microsoft in order to make it what it once was skylanders skylanders used to be a huge property and again it kind of fell by the wayside because activation being activation you know they drained their players and i think skylanders could be again a game that it was before if 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 they targeted more towards like the roblox type of crowd you know i think skylanders could become what it once was and 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 that's another property that that is prime to to be used by microsoft and recoup some of that investment that they're making right now but that's just some of the properties that activation has activation has tons of properties that haven't been used correctly or that were driven to the ground by the activation blizzard model of let's get a game 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 and people just get tired of playing the same game once they realize that hold on i'm I'm playing the same thing here you're not giving me anything new you just added a couple of new things different skins but I'm, you're making me play the same thing and that eventually makes players tired of playing games and activation you know it squeezes as much as they can out of a game and then they throw it away and so uh, there's a lot of things that activation has that microsoft i feel could take advantage of and become the home for games that you cannot play anywhere else now that microsoft owns activation blizzard they have become the third largest gaming game developing company out there and it's one of the reasons why they are becoming microsoft gaming not only that but as i have been saying game pass is the future of gaming or not necessarily game pass but the model of game pass is the future of gaming and this is something that sony is finally recognizing by them trying to catch up and you know saying that they're going to launch a similar service and i Again, I don't know what Sony is waiting for because what Microsoft is doing right now by acquiring Activision creates a huge problem for Sony. And I know that Sony has a contract with Activision about Call of Duty and early access and all this stuff. But you know what? Contracts have an ending date. Contracts end at one point. And once this contract is over for Sony, which might die on this upcoming uh, Call of Duty game, then what? You know, so I feel that th this should be a wake up call for PlayStation leadership to show and for them to be able to, to see where the business is going. The business is not console sales and game attachment anymore. The name of the game as Microsoft is showing is a subscription based service where people can go and play every single game that the company can offer. Sony needs to wake up and get on it yesterday. What do you think about the acquisition from Microsoft? Do you think that they're going to make huge changes upcoming uh, uh, for development of upcoming games? Do you think that we're going to get an every other year Call of Duty. Do you think that Sony will finally make an announcement on their plans to fight Microsoft and Game Pass? Let me know in the comment section. Give me your thoughts on this gigantic, crazy deal that just took place. That's it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. 
go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.